Good evening and welcome as you join from wherever you may be on this what in Salisbury is extremely <laughs> damp and, and frankly miserable Tuesday evening outside but inside hey it's all right it's nice and warm and dry it's nice to welcome you along I will just give it a few moments for all of the participants to uh, arrive and then we will be able to uh, make a good start. It's really nice that uh, a good number of people have signed up for this session and of course it will be available afterwards for people to catch up and um, watch it uh, subsequently but of course you have the advantage of being able to add, uh, contribute and, and, and ask questions and so forth in, uh, in real time. Uh, that's one of the benefits of turning up at the appointed hour. So, so people still arriving do excuse the uh, slight delay therefore in starting and as you can see I'm actually sat in our I hope you can hear this all right I might just move it up slightly I'm actually sat in my actual office in actual Salisbury not being home working for a few days this week it's very nice to be with colleagues although of course it being six o'clock here in in Salisbury they most of the others have um well I would say actually gone home but actually one of our colleagues is is getting married very shortly and so they've actually all gone to the pub to celebrate the fact that um that the, the wedding is forthcoming so that's uh, a really really um, joyful story let's say that the number of people here for the moment is who we've got so it doesn't matter how, however many more people join they will they will soon join us so welcome from me my name is Hugh Morris and I am the RSCM's director you may be joining from somebody who's part of an RSTM member church. You may be uh, a different kind of choir who've connected with this um, project and are here to learn about some tips and tricks about teaching it to your choir. I'm going to focus this evening's session on it from a choir trainer's point of view. Now, if you're just a singer in a choir, then I'm, I'm hoping you still get the chance to learn the music and feel that you've engaged with it positively. But I'm going to try and put a choir trainer's hat slant onto it. Before we start the session, just a few sort of pre-flight checks, in-house sort of rules for these sessions. We are recording it, so you'll be able to watch it uh, again via the links on our website. Uh, it'll take a couple of days for that to become available. If you want to ask a question to me in the session tonight, which will last, I don't know, 45 minutes-ish, then uh, use the Q&A function on the, that's the Q&A bit rather than the chat on the bar at the bottom if you're on a computer or somewhere else on your screen if you're on a tablet or phone. Um, the technical host, which tonight is Carla, is, is able to help manage those questions for me, so she will be keeping an eye on that. Um, uh, I think, we think you can contribute to the chat this evening. Uh, if so, you're very welcome to say where you're joining from. It'd be nice to hear from you. If that's been set to be disabled, then, then don't worry. Uh, I would ask you as we get into the actual session, though, to really focus on not putting lots of distracted chat. Let's just really focus on getting the best out of this piece. Um, if you say so anything that you put in the questions, which remember this is a public format, so make the questions appropriate for that safe uh, space. And if anybody is with an under 18, we uh, ask that the adult remains with them. Uh, so um, uh, I think that's everything that we've got here. Oh, just to say that because this is a webinar format, you won't see any or hear any of the other participants. Uh, so um, that's, uh, if you are in any way sort of, if I refer to you by name, it will show you um, where you are coming from. And I think that's it. And as it closes, you won't be able to speak any further with me today, though, of course, you're always welcome to email to be in touch. So what are we trying to do? Let me just give you very briefly a context to this piece. And I've got a copy here in case you haven't. If you've ordered and downloaded your pack of music, and you, you probably got it on your screen or a digital device. If you haven't, then Carl has put in the chat and I'm sort of pointing down here because it looks like it on my screen a link to the flipbook version of it. So you should be able to follow along on the screen uh, if, so that you can look at it as a sort of, uh, so that you've got the context of what I'm working on. The overall context here is that because the Queen is our royal patron, and, and of course we're very proud of that, we wanted to find a way of marking that for her astonishing Platinum Jubilee. There are some other Jubilee pieces out there. What we wanted to do with this one, because they don't all seem that singable to me, and so what we wanted to do was make something that was intensely singable. Um, we 
uh, contacted, or at least I contacted Thomas Hewitt Jones as somebody who we thought would be a really good person to help us achieve what we wanted. And indeed, that has absolutely proved to be the case. Tom has done a really brilliant job. I asked him to create something that was really approachable, that people could learn without difficulty, and that would have um, the, the, the kind of really difficult balance to strike between being approachable, melodic, singable, and appealing, yet not cloying and um, get really sort of, uh, you get fed up with it in the first few, five minutes. I think he's responded magnificently to that challenge, and I hope you enjoy engaging with it. I should warn you, this piece is a complete earworm. It uh, it gets on your brain. It will keep following you around the house while you're doing the washing up or all these other things. Uh, but but that's a good thing because the tune really is very memorable. So tonight, I want to look a bit about how the piece is structured, introduce you to the content and make you think about how you might teach it with a choir that you're working with, wherever that may be. And uh, and also, of course, to encourage you to get other choirs to sign up to doing it. We, we've, we've got several hundred already who've got hold of the music packs. We want that to be even more. Of course we do. So uh, hopefully you will be able to spread the word and get them to um, buy their own copies for their choir. Essentially, then, if you look at the the the, the structure of the piece, it's, it's strophic, as in it's like a hymn, it's got the same basic melody in four clear verses. What we tried to do was to make it that it's flexible so that you can do it. There's a unison version on the website if you want. There's a version where you can just print the choir parts, by the way, if you want to save paper. There's also the SATB version, so you can do four part harmony. And they all interchange with each other, so you can they, they all fit together seamlessly. There's also an accompaniment for piano and for organ. Now, obviously, I've got a, I've got a state electric piano sat in front of me this evening. You can mix those in, together as well. In fact, I'm going to finish this evening, hopefully, by sharing a video with you, which um, shows you what's happened if you put that all together. And the uh, there is an orchestration coming uh, subsequently that Thomas is working on at the moment. Our thinking was that you'd be able to use it in a church service, you could use it in a concert. It's not a big enough piece to be its own thing, of course. You, you're unlikely to just get people to come together just to sing this one thing. But hopefully you think, oh, I could put it into something else I'm doing to mark the Jubilee as well. The other thing I'd just say about it is that the words Thomas has written, and he took as a starting point the Queen's own speeches over the years on different themes. And so that's a really positive way of sort of celebrating what she stands for. And I have to say that when they, when we got to the accession anniversary at the beginning of February and they said about the Queen, uh, the, there was her letter that she'd written and she talked about her servitude. Actually, it made me think, in our service, yes, we've, we've, we've kind of got this right in terms of the pitching of it. So I really hope that that's the case. Okay, are you ready? Let's have a look at the music. So far, so good. Say so any problems? Then, uh, if you had a questions, put it in the questions. Uh, if you haven't got your score, download it now. And I should just say that I, I, because I, I kind of, when I've done these sessions from home, I've had um, headphones with a much longer wire. In Salisbury, I've only got these ones, the ones from my phone, and they're on a rather short cable, which means that the cable kind of is where my left hand wants to play a lot of the time. So if I get tangled in the wires, I do apologise, but I hope you'll forgive me for that. I wonder, does your choir like learning new music or not? Some seem to really enjoy the challenge. Some get oh, worried and actually they're much more comfortable singing music that they already know. If you are fall into that category of we're not sure about learning new music, you have a responsibility to help make that process work really well for them. And if you think about it, you have to spin around and put yourself in their shoes. A lot of our choir training is about empathy, actually, and understanding what you're giving to the people who are working with you. So you have to think about how you're presenting a new piece, what expectations you have, and ultimately, are you being reasonable about the way that you're going about doing it? Because actually, that makes it a better experience for everyone, and including... Um, the person leading the rehearsal and the people in the choir. And over the years, I have sat in hundreds of rehearsals and I've taken hundreds of rehearsals and I have seen the full gamut of between from absolutely wonderful to really uh, not very good at all. And there are a few things that you can make sure that you do one of the wonderful ones 
Um, actually, I would also, by the way, a little bit of um, uh, kind of encouragement that the Voice for Life Guide for Choir Training, published by the RSCM, it doesn't matter if you're a novice choir trainer or been doing it with a professional choir for 20 years, there are things in it that are really good. Have a look on our website. So here we go. We've got this piece. And I wonder how you start it. First of all, I would talk to the choir about what it is. Why are you learning it? What are you hoping it's going to do for you? And in this case, there's something about, obviously it's about marking the Jubilee. Talk to the choir about the meaning. Get them to do the work. Don't always talk at your choir. Now, of course, in this format of a webinar, all I can do is talk. I can't say talk to each other about what you think it is if you read the words. But before you start, don't just say, right, we're off. I just start the music. Set the ground, set the scene, say that this is a piece that's market and it's set in these things. So what we're going to do to begin with is we're going to learn the melody of the first verse, say. And when I say learn the melody, maybe that's what I mean. We make this weird assumption that suddenly you should expect your choir to be able to properly engage with unfamiliar words, an unfamiliar set of pitches in the melody and a rhythm they don't know. That means you're asking them to do three things at once. And if I asked you to stand on one leg, pat your head with one um, hand and rub your stomach with the other, actually you'd be going, oh, but that's quite hard. Exactly. So break it down into things that make it easier. Chunk it down. First thing, the easiest starting point is just to get the choir to read the words out. Now, when, at one point when I uh, was working regularly with choristers, uh, I, the, 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 uh, I, would, I would get them to, um, read the words of psalms out actually rather than because uh, because the, the, the boys choir found psalms quite sort of hard to deal with and actually i used to get them to act out the words and read them out in a kind of declamatory way putting lots of extra meaning in not as in chorus like in school assembly good morning mr maris good or everyone reading it all at the same time in their own way and the reason was to get them to engage with the text now you have to set the right parameters around that so that people feel comfortable but no gilded throne nor gleaming crown of sapphire can sure outshine an earthly vow to serve to live with dignity with humble stewardship and sacrifice a pledge of unity a vow of love so those are the words of your first verse and then you need to maybe think about okay how do i get the choir to now engage with this lots of people think that their choir is going to is, is reading the music brilliantly when you get the piano going you know you're thinking yeah they're doing they're brilliantly following along and it follow along is what they're doing they're not reading the music what they're doing is processing brilliantly quickly the music that they're hearing if you can get to a point where the choir don't need you to do that and are thinking it for themselves you're going to be in a much better place because you've empowered them as learners. But to do it, you have to make it that they've had it broken down into minimal steps. Just to show you, um, you can break it, for instance, again, um, where's the scrolling score, please? So, yes, uh, thank you, Philip. So if you, in the chat there, you should see there was a link above it to the, uh, the, the Carla put in the top there from the, it says RSM host. You should be able to click on that flipbook link, rcm.com slash flipbooks, um, should show you uh, the link to the, the, the actual score, and you should be able to see that on the screen. You don't need to be able to see me because it's only my voice you need, uh, and you don't need to be able to look at the score. So uh, have a look about, so what some tricks I've used with choruses is, is, um, is around, yeah, so, so you can sing the note values, uh, you can sing the you can sing the pitches. So, for instance, if you were to sing, let's just look at the first couple of phrases. If you're doing it with, and I'd encourage you to do, I'll show you, and then actually just do it with me, so you get the experience of doing it. Uh, that um, because that, and you can sit there and watch and go, yeah, what's he doing? But actually, if you actually try it, you get actually internalise what's going on. So, uh, from the very beginning of when the choir begins, which is the third printed line, it's bar ten. So I'm gonna, now I should say this piece is not in 4-4, four, four. it is in cut time, 2-2. Two, two. If you do this piece in four crotchets in the bar, you will kill the life of it. Do not do that, 
do it with a minimum pulse, it will flow much, much better. So it's, a, it's, after, it's after one, two, one. Sing the notes, um, but actually for, for the purposes of teaching it, I'm gonna have to do it in crotchets, I think. You could do it learning the rhythm by doing it as if a crotchet's worth one beat. One, 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 three, one, 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 one and a half, half, two, three. Ah, that three one's hard because there's a tied note. And that means you've got to explain about a tied note. Just try the first bit, just try that singing and to the note values, the length, the durations of each pitch. So it's one and two and one. One, 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 three, one, 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 one and a half, half, two, three. One, 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 five. One, one and a half, half, one. Oh, sorry, not one. That's six, the last one. And one of the things about it is that the only way that you can sing at that point in your choir is to have a go at those durations. Now, it doesn't, of course, you've got to have explained that everyone is up to speed about what a one beat note is, what a two beat note is, and so forth. Because if you just sing, um, do, 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 and do is a good way of learning a tune, but the, the disadvantage is that they can't, you can't tell who is doing it by looking at the notes and who is doing it just by ear wigging the person to their left or their right. Another way that you can look at this tune, and then we'll actually look about the whole sweep of the first verse, because time is, is relatively limited tonight, um, is, is to say, look at the pitch structure and say, another game that you can play. And particularly if you're working with younger singers, turning it into a game is really good. Adults also enjoy games if you set up the context of the rehearsal right and explain why you're doing it. And, and, and don't make people feel silly or in, in disinhibited by that, that you're exposing them. People don't like being exposed. But if you set the expectation of we're all going to do this together, actually it can be quite fun. So in, this, in the pitch game, you can talk about whether something is the same note or it's a step apart. Well, actually, you could do the simpler version, the simplified version is to go up or down or same. So that you're just following the shape. So you, the, the, that would be start up, 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 down, up, up, down, up, up, same. Do you see how that works? You, you, you're sort of helping shape the contour. Just try the same thing with me. Uh, so just from the very beginning of where the words would be no gilded, just start the exercise, actually sing it out loud. One and two and go. Start up, 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 down, up, up, down, up, up, same. Well done. And don't forget to, whatever you do with your choir, don't forget to encourage them. Even if it's terrible, even if it's terrible, say, well done for having a go. Now let's have another go and put something right. Don't say that was rubbish, because all you've done is deflate their confidence of learning a new thing. Um, I'm sorry, but I can't find the scrolling score either. So if the link doesn't work, if you literally go to, well, so if the, the, there is the link there that should take you to a flip book, which will pop up on Internet Explorer or Edge or whatever you've got there. If you can't, if you go to RSCM shop and follow the links through to Platinum Project and click on the product title, uh, it'll take you through. And there is somewhere it says, if it, say, view the sample score. Um, uh, so I wonder, Carla, if I could just get you to repost that link in the... Ah, link not showing in our chat here. Carla, I wonder if you could um, make sure the post is available to everybody and because it might, I guess, to come up to hosts and panelists, make sure it's visible to everybody and, and uh, repost it. That would be really helpful. Thank you. Um, the, uh, yeah, where were we just before we start? Yes, yeah, so, so, so you can break, break these things into, into um, encouraging things. Let's actually look about the first verse. So I'm going to play it all the way through this time and uh, encourage you to um, just either sing it to the... Thank you, Carla. There's a, the, the link's in the chat there now, folks. Do you have, a, have another look? There's an introduction, which, of course, again, if you've got a choir being alert, is showing you the tune. There it is. So you can just sing it now as we get, there's, this is your entry. Just sing it to do, so you're focusing on the melodic shape. Breeze at the rests. Breeze at the rests. Do, 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 do. Here we go, one and two and all one. Do, do. Well done. And the 
reason I often use do rather than la 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 because the uh, uh, you can miss pitch badly. Uh, la 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 la, and it tends to push the sound down. Do, 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 do. Tends to be a brighter sound and help keep the pitch right. In that last line, this is bar 26 and bar 27. Do, 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 do. The choirs find reading those that are the same really and annoyingly difficult. So just watch out for that little moment. Let's run that same verse again, and this time let's sing the, um, the words with it. So you put that together and we'll look at the next verse. So when you get to the end of that bit with your choir, what are you going to say to them? Correct answer, well done. So that you encourage it and you say, we're going to do it again. To which the choir's answer is, why? There's no point in just doing it again if you're not going to change something. Otherwise, you're just going to do the same end product again. So this time, you could say, we're going to do it again. And this time, we're going to really concentrate on singing through the long notes. This time, we're going to do it again, but I'm going to play the piano only just playing the bass line to make sure that you're confident with the tune. This time, we're going to do it again. And this time, we're going to add in the words. But give a reason. For goodness sake, give a reason. Otherwise, how are they supposed to know what's going on in your mind? There must be some reason you wanted to do it again other than you're thinking, oh, heck, there's still 20 minutes to go. What am I going to do with the time? There's always something that you can improve. So this time we're going to do it with the words, folks. Uh, wherever you're joining from, uh, it's lovely to have you here. I know there's some people who've just been joining um, as we've been starting this session. Wherever in the world you may be, it's a joy to have you here. No gilded throne. Not now. One of the things about this, in, in any piece where there's a long note, um, the, the video and sound isn't great. Oh, no, I think that might be, yes, it's, <laughs> Carla, I hope everybody's video and sound is okay. If it doesn't sound great where you are, I apologise, but uh, we'll check with the recording. We have had some Wi-Fi connectivity issues in the office today, um, actually as a result of the lift in the building broken and it messed up stuff. Uh, so I apologise if the sound isn't great, but, but do stick with it and hopefully you can make some sense of it. So uh, what I was going to say is um, the, um, yeah, we'll, we'll try it one more time for the beginning. No, oh, yes, uh, and, and, and then my, my own voice is very loud in my head with the uh, earphones that sort of block out external sound. I'm sure you'll sing more nicely as we go from the very beginning. No gilded throne. Oh, yes, don't give up on the long notes. Sing through the long notes, give them love, make the music move forward. So here's two bars of introduction. throne or gleaming crown of sapphire and I'm going to stop you and just say have you thought about the words and you need to get your choir to enunciate the words clearly because otherwise the people listening be that in a service in a concert in the park wherever are never going to make out what you're going to do and in which case you might as well just sing it too do you have to make the text count otherwise there is no reason for doing it at all so we'll try one more time from the top. No gilded throne. One and two and go. No gilded throne, nor gleaming crown of sapphire can sure a child an earthly to serve, to live with dignity. Crescendo here with humble stewardship and sacrifice, a pledge of unity, a vow of love. And now, one thing to watch out in this piece at the end of a verse, particularly if you're having to accompany it and you can't conduct it, is the length of the last notes. There's no reason to shorten them, the rests are always there. So, a vow of love. And if you get your choir to finish on a beat with everyone enunciating the v of v love together, it makes it so much easier for everyone to hear love, because then it's one action, because otherwise you get love and you don't get the energy, particularly if you're singing to a big space. So there's your main, um, uh, oh, I've just realized my, I've got photocopied pages here ready and they're not in the right order, which is always the danger of not stable pages. This is what we need, the second verse. As you move on to the next verse, if you look about it, it's the same melody and it's been set to harmony. Now that produces for your choir a couple of challenges. Your first challenge in the rehearsal is of course that the sopranos are about to sing the same melody. 
that means they run the risk of being bored very quickly because they'll just go into, yeah, we know this tune because it's the same tune. All they've got to do is sing some not particularly difficult words to the same melody. Meantime, your lower parts have got to do new notes and new words and less support from the accompaniment, which is deliberately mostly the same, but not completely covering. That was an intentional thing, not to completely cover the choir parts. You need to do then think about how you break that down and how you keep those sopranos engaged. I would at this point take the words out of the equation again and sing it to do so that you can fo focus on the harmony and what you're trying to do is get it right each stage and add something new in not just go oh it's difficult oh it's not very good and break it say so get everybody to focus on their own part and focus on what they're doing now. It might be that what you've got to do is go through each four part, each of the four parts, and I'm, gonna, I'm looking at the SATB version here, but, but you might um, equally, of course, be using the unison version, in which case, obviously, it's an easier task. But if you're working with an SATB choir, if you just say, right, okay, sopranos will go through the tune, well, that's pointless because it's the same tune, and you get altos will go through yours, and then tenors, and then basses, what happens is that three quarters of the room are disengaged with what you're doing all the time. I would suggest that it's much better, first of all, in the case of the Sopranos, get them to learn the alto part, just so it's something different to do. Why shouldn't they learn something else? Secondly, it's not going too low, it'll be fine. Secondly, get them to hum softly their part, even when you're focusing on another part, because that way, they are staying engaged with it. There is another option where you could get the tenors to learn the alto part, or something, but that's less helpful for them. You're better off getting them to keep singing their part and then put it right when you focus on their part one particular time. I should say on the website that there are for this piece um, uh, rehearsal tracks which include prominent tenors, prominent altos, prominent bass and so forth, so that to make it uh, easy to support your choir's learning. And this is a way that we'll be moving forwards to help people from that. So if you imagine for the minute, I'm working with the basses, this is verse two. You can help by, um, actually that, that part isn't that hard, is it? So we've got a lot of C's in the row. If you just play that. There's not very much music in just bashing out a bass line. The two things I do is encourage your tune, the lower part still to think about singing a melody from, sorry, long day, uh, from left to right. So they're not just singing a bass line, this is that notes I sing. And secondly, if you can, I find it helpful just to put in, in this case, the organ pedal note, some kind of grounding point that gives them a reason to work out how their note fits in the chord. So that for instance, so, Um, actually, it's almost easier to show you that with the tenors because the tenor part would be. So that then the tenors have got something to orientate themselves against that isn't just notes in isolation. They can hear how it fits together. The other trick that is really helpful to do is not play the piano too loudly. Otherwise, you are doing the work. If you bashing out a part, you will internalize it because I am bound to it to you. Better to get them to work out what the notes are by looking at it and thinking about the shape. And again, you can actually, can sometimes you can, I've done it before with quietly, if it's going up, use a hand up shape, do the hand down. And you can soon see who's following the music and who's not because if, it's like the Grand Old Duke of York, when they're up, they're up, and when they're down, they're down, you know. And, and those who haven't got a clue what's going on are neither halfway up nor down. <laughs> you want to encourage the singers all the time. So, let me just play you through. You can choose a part to look at. Have a, f a follow through the music of this second verse. Notice that it's marked as a, as a mezzo forte uh, dynamic. Though earthly rulers, roles are often fleeting. Truth comes to those who nobly dare to live a life of constancy, to love thy neighbour and thy family, a living ministry, an act of love. Now you might notice uh, it, this is uh, on page six. It goes into some words in italics. We added, in, they're not Thomas's words actually, we've editorially added 
some modified versions which make it more, if you will, Jesus focused, uh, Christ like, in order to be usable in a wider range of church contexts subsequently. Though, of course, actually, this whole anthem you can read about Christ's kingly service rather than the Queen's queenly service. It's still, um, there are multiple layers to it, but we wanted the text to be applicable to community choirs, chamber choirs, choral societies. Anybody would feel empowered to sing it. Let's just look at this harmony then from, this is page five. I'm going to play it a bit slower and just have a look at whatever vocal part you'd normally sing. Just have a go at following that through now. Sing it to do. There's the note. So it's one and two and one. How did you get on? One thing that you can do is actually never get the, say, if you're wanting to sort of, particularly if time is short, a halfway house is just to say, nobody make a noise, just listen. I'm just going to play your parts through. And then they're going to have a go at singing it. Then you've set the parameters for how it goes. They're not feeling their way in the dark. They know actually how it sounds and therefore they're singing it second sight, not first sight. Um, there are one or two moments in that verse, for instance, uh, bar 30, page six, top of page six, bars 39 to 40. You'd have been a quite scrunchy chord. You might need to work with your choir to get them to be confident about reaching for a note, particularly for the basses, who nobly dare, to enjoy the moments that are a bit scrunchy, because they're just mild dissonances to put them to make it the music expressive. Thomas was really keen to write something that was expressive. He has completely done that. And every time you get to the word love, to love thy neighbour, you've got to put some inject some caressing of the word into the, te the sentiment. We'll try it one more time with the words. The earthly rulers' roles are often fleeting, and again, as soon as you're thinking two and above, fleeting, you can do a, you can do a shade off. So the, the notes at the start of the bar are really important. As soon as you go fleeting, you will get too much ting in your fleet if you see what I mean. The other thing to notice is that because this music starts the verses on the, on the, with a rest, you've got to feel that pose with your choir and actually what you do as a conductor can really help them that they feel the downbeat that they're bouncing off. The earthly rules. Think ahead, help your choir to prepare and help to feel that pulse. So uh, here's two bars. This is page back to page five. getting on all right well done for keeping up if you have any questions do drop them in the questions very pleased to answer that um, as we go or at the end now that gets you to uh halfway through the piece now what he does in verse three is change key this is the one bit where the melody even for the sopranos changes um so every day we strive to do what's right not choosing spite nor breeding hate, and then it goes back to the same melody. So you can break that down again for your choir. You could play it for them if that was helpful. Uh, you can um, just see, uh, you know, get them to have a go and just see what happens. You can play it, say all sorts of different ways that you could do it. 
it's supposed to be softer this third verse it's the same speed though of course so many choirs make them make the error of when it's softer they lose confidence internally it needs to be the same volume uh and actually i'm singing along that was what i was going to say also because of this weird notion of a zoom rehearsal i have to kind of sing otherwise there's nothing if you if you in a choir practice are singing along with your choir to help them you're not really helping them because you can't listen very well. Uh, you need to be listening and helping them progress unless you really need to sing, don't do it. This bit though. So every day we strive, oh, and a long note like day, I didn't do it brilliantly then. Watch out for diphthongs. Sing on the first part of the vowel. So every day we, because day has got the second part of the vowel. Sing on the first one, it'll just change automatically as you carry on. Do not take a breath there because you don't need it. Let the rests help you. Not choosing spite, nor breeding hate. Uh, then, so you'll find that magically we've ended up at a tone higher as we go through the second key change. So the link, this is bar 52, where it says both hands on the grate. changes now. So every day we strive to do what's right, not choosing spite, nor pleading hate. Now that hate is a long note. You've got to encourage the choir to do something, otherwise I go hate. And it's all to do, and we haven't really had time in this session to do it, there are lots of other things you could do, but Think about breathing hate and, and actually enabling the breath to keep going and not going hate and collapsing and finding nothing left is something that's really important. For the moment, we're going to keep going on. A life of faith and honesty. Tenors, just for what it's worth, there's in this bottom line of page eight, there are a couple of trap notes, but the bass is a life of faith and honesty. Any note with an accidental for a singer is hard because it means by definition it's not in the key signature and therefore it's something unexpected and you've got to help them over that barrier. Uh, the tenors, similarly, a couple of bars later in bar 67, faith and honesty isn't so easy to pitch as some of the other bars. Um, just also, while you look at it on the top of page nine, page nine, there are two notes where you could divide your sopranos into two parts just to get a little tiny bit of breakout harmony. It's not too crucial, you could miss that out. No one will really notice, it's just a nice little touch. And the idea is it's building as you reach the end of this verse. So just to give you the shape of that, I'm gonna pick this up at the word hate. That's where we got to, bar 63, page eight. One and two, and hate. A life of faith and honesty has come. Now, two things happen there. First of all, that love is long. Secondly, the pulse begins to slow down with a writ. Also, just at the top of page nine, altos have got a juicy, Thomas indulged it a bit, and actually this is the toned down version from his first version of this section. Um, <laughs> you end up with this sort of... Uh, um, in harmonically indulgent bar with a G sharp at the alto, it's as courage is the key to breathe. They've got to go for it. If you're going to sing it, you've just got to go with uh, indulging in the notes. So the music at the end of this verse, sustained by love. And actually I'm deliberately going into four so I can control the pulse. The idea is that the organ crescendos of the piano and you get a crash. The truth is grief. Now, this is a phrase the Queen said, grief is the price we pay for love. Um, though, again, as the, the truth is, Christ gives the pattern for our love as an alternative in due course. You need the breath. The truth is grief. That's the tick. Now, it says tutti voices. And of course, that's another challenge. The basses, and indeed the tenors, and that they, they have this all the time in music, are required, in this case, to read two different clefs. 
you need to think about that and be sensitive to it as you go through it. And I'm just not spending too much time on it now because um, alert to the length of the session and that, um, uh, that I, actually I've got something following and actually I know Carla, who's being our wonderful technical host today, has a succeeding uh, appointment also. So the session can't overrun. What we need to do is, uh, is to think about how you as a conductor help manage that. And you actually, of course, as a conductor, you have to practice these things. Don't assume that you're gonna get it right with no practice. Why would you do that? So actually, and by the way, a mirror can be a slightly brutal, but really helpful thing to do. You can video yourself on an iPad, but beware of that, because like on Zoom, I can see myself here. There is a fractional delay between the camera recording what you're doing. And that sort of is a bit off-putting. So mirror, but looking back, what does this look like to the choir? Am I giving them the information they need to navigate this tempo change? So the writ would be two, three, four. Uh, the truth is greedy. You've got, to, you've got to give them a pulse so that they know what they're doing. And then you're back into two in a bar for the last verse, but a bit slower. So you could do this um, in unison. If you don't want to do the desk count, you could just do it with everybody singing the main melody. Uh, actually, my, my local parish church, they did this piece on the Queen's Accession. They were sort of an early adopter. And um, uh, they decided to not learn the desk count first time around. They said, we'll save the desk count for, for June, for the actual Jubilee. So that the first time out, they just wanted to get the last verse really good and strong. And, and the choir master left that learning the desk camp for a subsequent occasion. Nothing wrong with that. That's all about partitioning things down and building the confidence. And you can, of course, reassure your choir that basically this last verse is the same. It's a note higher, we're in a different key, but it's basically the same. The idea is it now. It is actually marked fortissimo, but I wouldn't really get your choir to bellow it out. It just means a strong sense of, oh, because if you do, the truth is, grief is, it's, oh, I don't really want it. That it's about feeling strong uh, and you've got to say the last bit for the very end so it's a, it's a sort of bold sound that you're after with confidence just before we cover it if you just look on page 11 and i hope you've managed to find those scores people if you've been following you know how politicians say the same point several times to make it you get a couple of bits where the, the last little phrase through all the darkest times, that's the bottom line, to show us holy life, through all the years of life. That melody is the same, and it, what happens is that the harmony underneath it, through all the darkest times, the harmony builds up. So that there's a sense of progression through it, and the melody is holding it still. And before we look at this desk count, just look at what happens here at the end on the last page, page 12. Throughout the years of life. Now it looks like there's a massive gap before the choir and there's anything there. Not so, that's just because of what's happened with the organ part spread chord, which is just to give it emphasis. And it's a short chord, by the way, if you're gonna play for that, if you wanna come off, don't cover the choir. But it's a years of life. Of how of life. So hold, pull the tempo back. Now there's a moment there where the choir, if you look for the words of our of love, and this is bar 99, with a flake, with your ice cream. Bar 99, there is uh, no organ or piano underneath it. The choir's left stranded. So you need to rehearse that. And of course the connecting point is the previous note. Years of life. There you are, there's your note. Of our of, so that they don't go, <gasps> There's no accompaniment and all just seize up. You've got to rehearse that with them so that they build the confidence. You'll need to practice that bit in separately. And they'll need to be really thinking about following the conductor to get it that they're together with confidence. And they have to do, it's quite a tricky moment because you've got to go slower. Uh, vow of, and then you've got to go back to a faster tempo. Now you could choose to do that as the very first tempo or maybe the more um, slightly steadier one if you wanted, but. To be honest, it's down to your accompanist to, to do that, or if you're playing yourself, then you, you know you make the decision. But they've got to don't do it too slowly because of our oh, it's a long note. Love 
and know that where the ending is intentional. Otherwise, again, it'll just fade away. It's supposed to be a big finish. The organist can slow it up in the last couple of bars, you know. Now there's the descant. Now here, you've got the opposite problem that everybody else is going, ah, it's the tune, we're away. Now your sopranos, who are used to singing the tune now, they've got it taped because they've sung it for three verses in a row, have suddenly got to do the hard work. Do not assume that they will suddenly go, oh, that's all right then, and sing it correctly. You are going to need to do some, um, some, uh, some help to get them through that. Again, you, now, how you, it's too high for the lower parts to sing, but they could follow along with shape things about, you know, making hand shapes to say what's going up and down or whatever. They could sing it an octave lower if that was helpful, just to sort of hum along to kind of keep engaged. Or you could ask them to do their, uh, in due course, to hum their part softly, softly, so that then they, the, the sopranos have got a context with which to work. But don't just sit, let them sit there like stuffed potatoes because they get bored. And that's not very good. What do you do in the choir practice tonight? Well, I'll sit and listen to the sopranos. I did actually sit in a choir practice I was playing for once. And the first half of the choir practice was 45 minutes long and I checked and the basses sang for 30 seconds. I didn't reckon that was a great way of spending a night out if I'd been a bass. You have to think about how you're engaging and supporting your singers. So just to alert to the time, this descant, the truth is, this is page 10. Grief is the price we pay for love. This bit's harder. Surely love will love sustain. A little bit of word painting, of course, sustain, so it's a long note. Now, here's your high note. With, uh, now, you need to use techniques so that the sopranos are going, because that's going to sound not all that pleasant. With, it's only a G, they can make a G, but they've got to breathe it. With, let it float there, not reach for it, because that's going to sound really strained. Let's carry on. It sounds like this. We there. Sorry, Mr. Words Grace. To ascend with purpose through darkest times, crescendoing throughout the years of life. And now it's the same as the opening melody, but. Of our of love. I'm not a soprano, so I'm not going to attempt to go up there. So you want to help them see the whole sweep of the piece. What are you going to do next? Well, as you do it, you need to work on the refinement of things like blend, vowel sounds, listening together, ensemble, dynamics, phrase shape. Every phrase needs a sense of where it is. Where's the special note? So if you take a phrase at random, um, I'm looking at the bottom of page 11. Through all the darkest times. Now you can make your choir think about it. Where is that? And so you can do it by putting up a hand. Through all, put your, you can ask the choirs, put your hand up on the most important note as you sing it. It's interesting to watch. Although you want to watch them, but they're not just, if they've learned it a couple of times, you get them to do it with their eyes closed because otherwise they do group voting. You know, it might be through all the darkest times or through all the darkest times. There are different options and actually sometimes I've come to the conclusion that I don't think it matters necessarily if everyone hasn't chosen the, exactly the same word. The main thing is that everyone is singing the shape so you don't get through all the darkest times because that's not musical. You want everyone to sing it with shape of meaning. There are on the website teaching aids for this piece. It's a really singable piece. Can I just encourage you, because I'm going to finish in a moment by playing the video that uh, two weeks ago I went to London and filmed it with um, a choir in Dulwich. And uh, nobody else has seen this yet, so you've got an exclusive sneak preview. And encourage you to, um, first of all, get other choirs to, 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 to join and buy it too. On our website, and in a minute, Carla will put in the chat feed a, a link to a, the, the form on the Platinum Project page. We have a web shop and we have the website. On the main site, there is a page that, that, where you can register where you're going to perform this piece and how. And we'll, we'll create a sort of map that, that shows where all the performances are happening. There's also a social media feed as you scroll down that. Oh, there we are. Thank you, Carla. As you scroll down the, the page, you'll see there's a social media wall. Now, you can contribute to that by using the hashtags of in our service and um, platinum, RSCM Platinum. 
so that then it will automatically feed from Twitter and Instagram. It doesn't feed off Facebook, but we can repost things on Facebook too. Just to, finally for me, a couple of words of encouragement to say, uh, if you're in the UK, then our membership conference is coming up in four weeks time. There will be sessions within that. We're about to launch the day plans and make the details, but there are lots of sessions supporting conductors and choir trainers in it. You can have some coaching on uh, developing your own skills as part of that day, uh, and really exciting. There's also generally we're working on developing something that's called the education menu, where there are sessions that we have been designing to help choir trainers of all sorts of abilities to, uh, to develop their own skills. And that will be rolling out across our area network from next year, well, across this year and, in, and then over following years. It's all part of our education plan. And if you look on our website, on the events page, there's an our events bit in the drop down menu. Uh, you'll be able to see where events are near to you. Keep a check on that because those will be developing and adding to over time. If you've got any questions, do drop them in the chat now. Thanks ever so much for your company. I hope you found it a helpful way in, to, 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 in some ways to um, unpack this. My encouragement to you is to, is to use any piece that you introduce to your choir as a way of encouraging them to get better and encourage them in it so that they feel confident to tackle new pieces. This one is quite approachable, and then you'll be able to tackle other new things too. One of the, uh, certainly, the, I was speaking to a singer in a, in a church choir the other day, and she was saying, oh, I really like church choir because it's completely different from my other ones because we have to learn music really fast. And actually, I like the challenge of that. And you have to make a virtue out of that. I'm going to share then, this is the video of, he says, hoping this is going to work, of... Um, the, the three minute performance and then um, I will uh, just check there aren't any other questions and then uh, we will call the evening to a close because at seven o'clock I say I know that uh, both Carl and I have other things that we need to do so the next sessions so uh, sharing the screen sorry I spend my life in teams not in uh, zoom most of the time so here we are hopefully you can see that I'm going to hit play on this and hope oh now I'm going to stop that because what I forgot to do was share the sound I do apologize otherwise you won't hear anything there we go here um the choir is it's yours truly playing the organ and uh it was lovely to go and spend time with these uh, really enthusiastic singers here's the piece in full here we go
I hope you enjoyed the chance to watch that. Thanks very much for your company this evening, everybody. And uh, I hope that you have a very good evening and you'll enjoy engaging with this piece. As ever, stay in touch. If you don't sign up to our newsletter already, then make sure you've subscribed to that at the bottom of our homepage. We're always pleased to hear from you. Um, to say, do in touch, stay in touch with this piece, sign up and um, say where you're going to perform it. And look forward to joining you, or you joining us at another session and hopefully see some of you at the membership conference before long. Thank you to Carla for hosting in the background. Thank you to all of you for joining. And I wish you all a very good evening. Thank you. Bye-bye.